As technology advances in the line between what is human and what is machine blurs, as we journey farther into space, it will be incumbent upon us to remember what it is to be human. We must remember what it means to be good in places and at times where concepts of good and evil may be more alien than the creatures and civilizations we are attempting to coexist with. Above all else, when staring down evil, whatever form it takes, wherever it comes into our lives, remember that there's no justice like Old West justice even in outer space. No guts, no glory, rangers ride forever. Hi, I'm Dan Larson and this is the History of the Galaxy Rangers. The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is a single-season, 65-episode animated series that debuted in the United States in September of 1986. While it has never received prominent mainstream attention, while its legacy is in the confusion with other similar programs of the time, it did run in syndication through 1989. The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers is the story of a near-future Earth in the year 2086, which doesn't seem as far away as it did in 1986. Two friendly aliens travel to Earth seeking to forge an alliance to enlist Earth in the battle against the great and terrible empire led by the Queen of the Crown. To help Earth join in the fight, the aliens reveal the secrets behind hyperdrive technology allowing Earthlings to explore the galaxy as a new frontier. A final frontier, if you will. Out in the galaxy, humans establish new colonies, and with new colonies come new crimes and criminals, and new threats from the previously mentioned evil empire. To face these threats, to maintain a system of law and order relative to the planet Earth, an organization called Beta is founded. Beta, the Bureau for Extraterrestrial Affairs, establishes a ranger system just like the Texas Rangers of Earth. Essentially a mini-FBI, a special task force within a larger body of law enforcement, except in this case there are only four rangers and they all have what are called Series 5 cybernetic implants. These implants enhance the abilities of the user, and each of these users has something about them that was peculiar to begin with. Zachary Fox lost half of his body in a fight with a space pirate, left side now enhanced. Nico has psychic powers, psychic powers now enhanced. Shane Goose Gooseman was created from a genetic experiment intended to create super troopers, trooper powers now enhanced. And Walter Doc Hartford was born to very rich parents and is very good with computers. Enhanced! The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers was created by Robert Mandel, who you probably know from... Well, you, you probably don't know him from much of anything else. In 1995, he created a show called Princess Guinevere and the Jewel Riders. In 1999, he worked on the King and I animated feature film. And that same year, he was the executive producer on eight episodes of the Ace Ventura animated series. Alrighty then. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't practice that. Can you believe it? <laughs> Galaxy Rangers was an original series developed in the visual style of Japanese animation at the time. It was produced in cooperation with Gaylord Entertainment Company and Japanese animation studio TMS Entertainment. Gaylord were the producers of Hee Haw from 1980 through 1997. The less said about that, the better. At the very least, it provides a window into the southern sensibilities that might have been at work in the offices of Gaylord at the time. But the real takeaway here is that Hee Haw was still being produced until 1997. As of 2000, Gaylord believed that their future was not in media production but in real estate management and tried to become a luxury hotel franchise. That didn't work and they now exist as a small hospitality company employing less than 100 people under the name Ryman Hospitality Properties. But we'll cover all of that in the history of Gaylord Entertainment Company. No. <laughs> no? We're not doing that? We're not doing that. <laughs> that was perfect. We didn't even rehearse it. <laughs> <laughs> TMS Entertainment was the animation studio that brought Galaxy Rangers to life. Founded in the 1960s, they were one of the oldest animation studios in Japan. You may have seen their work in feature films like 1988's Akira and 1989's Little Nemo Adventures in Slumberland, or American television programs The Mighty Orbots in 1984 and Bionic 6 in 1987. Galaxy Rangers has one of the most memorable theme songs for those who have heard it, and there's a good reason for that. When you pay for the best, you get the best. No Guts, No Glory was written by Phil Galdston and John Van Tongeren. Phil was nominated for a Grammy as one of the writers for Vanessa Williams' hit Save the Best for Last. John was a prolific synthesizerist, a, synth a synthesist, a, th a synthesizist. John was a talented and prolific electronic keyboard player who had worked with lots of successful pop musicians like John Parr and Striper and with a full resume of movie and television credits like True Romance, Triple X, and The Outer Limits. 
But 1986 was a difficult time to be in both the cartoon and action figure business. Both industries were packed to the gills with offerings from all genres of superhero and science fiction fiction. While it was a challenging time to produce product, there was never a better time to be a consumer. Kids could choose from superheroes, cyborg superheroes, cops, robocops, superhero cyborg cops, sheriff, space sheriff, cyborg sheriffs, and even superhero cyborg space sheriff robot cops with or without talking horses. Rocket into the new frontier of adventure. Into worlds of unknown dangers, ride the Galaxy Rangers. Ride with them. Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers, Monday through Friday mornings at 8.30 on TV14. During this era, there were two different types of cartoons being produced. One, cartoons that were created to advertise a line of toys, and two, cartoons that were supported by a line of toys. What's the difference? Version 1 would see the toy created first, and the show would be built around promoting the features and play structure of that toy. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Mask, and Centurions all fit this category. Version 2 would see the show and mythology created first, and then a line of toys would be developed to supplement the revenue being brought in by the show. Galaxy Rangers falls into this category, as do Bionic 6 and The Mighty Orbots, the two other productions from TMS Entertainment. For this reason, the promotion of a toy line is not as essential to the success of the brand, and whether or not a toy line even makes it to the shelves is determined by the success or failure of the show. Despite the fact that Galaxy Rangers did run for a full season of 65 episodes, it never reached an audience large enough to justify presence on the toy shelves in the United States. But that wasn't the only factor behind the decision not to release the toys domestically, because there were toys produced by Galoob in 1986. Series 1 of the toy line featured three of the four Galaxy Rangers. Nico is conspicuously, but not surprisingly, absent. Zack, Doc, and Talk to Me Goose could square off against villains like the Queen Emperor, Captain Kidd, and Lazarus Slade. The Rangers could ride for justice on their cybernetic steeds Triton, Z100, and Mel. There were roleplay items like a full-size light and sound blaster as well as a six-shooter water gun. And to top it all off, the Zap Pack playset utilized the same type of laser light technology and play gimmick that was being used by direct competitors Mattel's Brave Star and Captain Power. Not only was Galaxy Rangers competing with Mattel, a much larger company, against their very similar Space Sheriff Western called Brave Star, but another Space Western called Saber Rider and the Star Sheriffs, from the same company that brought you Voltron, was set to hit the US audience in 1987. No, you're not the only one who remembers it, and yes, we will cover it at some point. And everyone in every toy-related market was competing with the cost of electronic-dependent toys and trying to grab the attention of kids who were engrossed with the Nintendo Entertainment System. Even if those were the only potential barriers to getting a toy line out, Galaxy Rangers may have been able to claim a share of that audience before both of those shows arrived in 1987. But the other issue was Galoob themselves. In 1983 and 1984, when Galoob happened to find themselves riding a wave of Mr. T popularity, the success of products related to T and the A-Team powered them to one of the best sales years in the then 30-year history of the company, allowing them to take a shot at the larger market and potentially compete on even ground with the big names. Other than Mr. T, Galoob had invested their resources in lines like Black Star, Golden Girl, The Infaceables, Defenders of the Earth, Inspector Gadget, and Punky Brewster. Not exactly first string names, toy lines that are just going to get dumped right into our Oddity series. At the same time, Galoob was moving their manufacturing overseas to China, and the market wasn't reacting well to the new higher-priced electronic toys and related gimmicks, even when they were tied to a popular franchise. Brave Star, Captain Power, Laser Tag, Photon, even Masters of the Universe, everyone was trying to reach the same buyers with very similar products. And as the price went up, the diversity of spending shrank. It is most likely that, by the time the toys were ready to go, the show wasn't getting the kind of numbers that would have justified the financial risk of releasing them in the United States. Galoob was already looking past Galaxy Rangers into what might help the company not only maintain, but expand, and it wasn't going to be Galaxy Rangers. Galoob moved all of their boys' toys resources to the 1986 release of Micro Machines and never looked back. Instead of dumping the action figures that had already been created into clearance bins in the U.S., Galoob merely shipped them east to Europe instead of west to the United States. To the dismay of American Galaxy Rangers fans, this has resulted in super rare, super expensive figures. 
While the secondary market has helped by making them available to a wider audience, it has also increased the number of people trying to acquire them, so prices remain prohibitive. It's a pattern of a dying brand in the United States to try to squeeze a little more life out of it overseas. In 1988, Galaxy Rangers would even see a nine-issue comic book series published by Marvel Comics' UK imprint, again issues that weren't released at the time in the United States. The entire series of The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers was released on DVD in 2008 as a two-part collection. Each collection contains four discs and may or may not be in stock at your favorite online DVD retailer. Sadly, The Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers had no finale, and therefore we do not know what happens to the Empire, the Rangers, or anything else related to the franchise. This is common with shows whose futures are dependent on ratings through their first half season. Especially with animation, there's no way to know in advance if the major plot lines should be tied up or continued into the second season. The rights currently belong to a Canadian company called Coke Entertainment, not to be confused with the makers of Coca-Cola or the Coke family who bring in annual revenues in the hundreds of billions and change the course of governments around the world. The Coke Entertainment we're referring to here is owned by a Canadian company called Entertainment One. Galaxy Rangers landed with Coke Entertainment through some succession of rights acquisitions as various companies expanded, contracted, went in and out of business, and all their assets were bundled together and sold to each other in the messy circle of media company life. There's no movie, no reboot, no Netflix remake in the works. The only option here for Galaxy Ranger lovers is to cherish what was as what will forever be. Keep them in your heart and love it as it exists, as you always have, forever. This episode of Toy Galaxy is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. Toy Galaxy is all about telling stories, stories about monsters, robots, aliens, superheroes, pop culture, collecting stuff. Squarespace empowers you to tell the story of your collection and your experience as a collector. Save yourself the time and hassle. Leave the visual design of your site to Squarespace's user-friendly, easy-to-customize templates. Write that blog. You've got ideas about how things should work. Workshop those ideas with the help of a community built around your brand and your voice. For whatever you're collecting, get organized, get archived, get a domain name, and declare your place in the online collecting community. Already have a domain? It's simple to set up or transfer your domain with Squarespace. Bring it over and direct all that traffic you're creating online into one place. Get the exposure to be the next big thing. It's never been easier to sell products or services online. Squarespace allows you to easily manage your products, orders, and inventory. Save the time for making stuff. Save your money for buying stuff. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toygalaxy to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you very much for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Share this video and let us know in the comments down below which of the three space western properties was your favorite, Galaxy Rangers, Brave Star, or Saber Rider, or which of the three had you heard of, or which of the three you thought you liked but turned out to be one of the other three because you didn't realize there were three different shows all playing the same notes. <laughs> Talking robot horses. <laughs>